in single player games, cheats can be a really fun, sort of bonus alternative way of experiencing a game that's harmless and enjoyable, unless they're impossible to unlock. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 of the best cheats that you never unlocked. Uh, just as a quick disclaimer, before I get into any of these, yeah, you can unlock them. They're not literally impossible to unlock. It's mostly that these are just really difficult or ridiculous to unlock, and we think they're all worth talking about on that basis. So, without any further ado, at number 10, Resident Evil 7's Infinite Ammo Cheat. In a horror game like this, it doesn't get much better than infinite ammo. Sure, it's not invincibility, you can still die, at least theoretically, but your chances of survival go up exponentially when you don't have to worry about a silly little thing like ammo. Most of the recent Resident Evil games give you some way of unlocking a buttonless magazine for all your weapons, and many times it can be pretty tough to get, but on top of the normal way to get this cheat, there's usually some alternate way to unlock it. The Resident Evil 2 remake uh, just lets you buy all the unlockables outright, while Resident Evil 4 gets you these golden tickets that make it a lot easier to unlock a lot of this stuff. Resident Evil 7, though. There's, uh, there's no pay to win here. You just have to knuckle down and unlock infinite ammo the old-fashioned way. A and to get it, you have to beat the game on Madhouse difficulty, which is... It's not a joke at all. It makes the game significantly harder. Uh, just getting through the opening, a part that's little more than a tutorial on standard difficulty, is very hard. And it only gets harder from there. It is Resident Evil we're talking about, though, so I'm sure that a lot of people have managed to beat this challenge, but it is extremely difficult, so if you do manage to unlock it, you might wonder exactly why you bothered. And number 9 is GoldenEye 007's Invincibility Cheat, an all-time classic that's probably responsible for hundreds if not thousands of smash controllers and damaged walls. Weird little three-pronged indents from that bizarre Nintendo 64 controller. If you've ever taken the time to try to unlock all the cheats in the Nintendo 64 Classic, you know how ridiculous the requirements to unlock this one are. Sounds simple, uh, but believe me, the timing on this one is insane. To unlock the coveted invincibility cheat, you have to get through the level facility, yes, Early level, true, but you gotta do it on double O agent difficulty in less than two minutes. This is not a long level, but to finish it that quickly requires an absolute mastery of this stage, almost choreography. I say almost because what really makes this challenge infuriating is there is an element of randomness to it. Uh, one of the objectives involves this scientist who he doesn't always show up in the same place, let's say. If you waste time looking for him, you're already out of the two minute limit, period. There's one ideal spot for him to show up, which forces you to just play through the stage over and over until he appears there, otherwise you'll just take too long. It was a huge pain, but you know what was the worst thing about it? There were codes all along. Nobody has to do this stupid speedrun, because you can just put in a code. But back when the game came out, nobody knew any of that, so we just all wasted a bunch of time doing it speedrun style, destroying our walls with the bizarre Nintendo 64 controller. And number eight is the Dead Space remake and the original Dead Space 2, the hand cannon. Uh, by far and away, one of the best unlockable guns of all time. It's goofy, I, I mean, it's a big foam finger, and it's really overpowered. Most enemies die from just a single, I guess, shot, you point at them. It has infinite ammo, because again, you just point at them, and you get access to it right at the start of the game. It's by all accounts just a cheat masquerading as an unlockable. It's fantastic, but actually getting it is no easy feat. To actually get the hand cannon, you gotta complete Dead Space 2 on hardcore mode, which means you gotta fight the toughest version of the enemies with extremely low ammo, and you only get to save three times during the whole thing. I mean, at least it's not one of those single death runs, but it's not a lot better. Uh, the weapon shows up in the Dead Space remake as well, and it's extremely challenging to get here too. In this version, you gotta beat the impossible difficulty where auto saves are permanently disabled, and if you die, the game just switches over to regular hard mode. So, regardless of the game that you're playing, the hand cannon is really hard to unlock. It's for the truly dedicated, but it is worthwhile and kind of hilarious. So, I mean, I get why you would want it.
At number seven is the Green Hyper Spray. Uh, horror games love their unlockable rewards. Uh, it's an incentive to get people to play the game again. And Silent Hill 2 has a fair share. The toughest to get is gotta be this item, this powerful variant of the Hyper Spray. Normally, a, a weapon that just sort of stuns enemies, but the Green Hyper Spray just kills everything instantly, which is quite a step up. There is a reason, though, each version unlocks for beating the game at a certain rank on a scale of one to 10. To get the purple spray, for example, you have to beat the game under two stars. To get the white, you have to get between rank two and eight. To get the green, you gotta do rank 10, which is the closest thing this game has to getting a perfect score. As you'd expect, it is also like not easy at all. You gotta play on hard, everything, take very little damage, beat the game in under three hours, and collect a ton of items, killing a bunch of enemies, and saving only two times and no more. And even then, it's not guaranteed you're gonna get 10 stars. Now, the green hyper spray sounds extremely overpowered. It's basically an instant kill cheat, but uh, getting it is a little more effort than it's worth, especially because a lot of the unlockable stuff that you get along the way is better. I mean, in terms of like relative risk, effort, and reward. And while none of them are quite as powerful as this thing, they're a lot easier to unlock. And number six is Eternal Mode in Eternal Darkness. When I said horror games love their unlockable cheats, I really meant it. Eternal Darkness doesn't hide its game breakers as items. It just gives you a cheat mode for your trouble. Eternal Mode is just the game with all the cheats turned on. You get infinite health, infinite magic, infinite sanity, uh, so nothing can stand in your way. Actually unlocking it is a slog though. You gotta get all three endings to get it, which means you have to play through the game three times, three, and then pick a different Elder God at the start. It is a lot to get through, and again, if I'm being honest here, it's not really worth it. A big part of the appeal of the game is the cool sanity effects, and you turn eternal mode on and you will never see them. Sure, it's fun to run around with infinite health and ammo, basically invincible in what is, frankly, a disarming situation to say the very least, but you're basically locking yourself out of one of the game's marquee features. Then again, after playing through the game that many times, you may not love those effects at this point, so I don't know. And number five is Dark Souls 2 The Illusory Rings. Uh, out of all the Souls games, two might have the most interesting and varied sets of rings. These things aren't always balanced, obviously, but they're fun to mess around with and can significantly alter how you play the game, depending on the rings you got equipped. Most of them are good. There's only two that I would really qualify as cheats, though. The Illusory Ring of a Conqueror and the Illusory Ring of the Exalted. What they do sound simple, uh, but keep in mind the type of game we're talking about here. All they do is make your left-hand weapon and right-hand weapons invisible so enemies can't see what you have equipped. In the regular game, that's meaningless, but in multiplayer, it is absolutely game-changing. If another player can't see what weapon you're using, they can't properly react to your attacks. It's honestly pretty unfair, uh, but getting to these things is so difficult. If you actually manage to get the rings fair and square, you probably deserve to be a pain in multiplayer. To get the illusory ring of a conqueror, you have to beat the game without dying. Uh, that's, that's once. You know, in a game where the tagline is prepare to die. Oh, and also, you're not getting around it with a ring of life protection. That counts too. Getting the illusory ring of the exalted is no easier. You have to get through the entire game without resting at a bonfire a single time. You can light them, but if you save even once, then the game, uh, it's, it's over in this respect and no ring for you. For PvP, these rings are killer, uh, but hardly anyone has them just because they're so incredibly difficult to actually unlock. And number four is Sonic Colors, Super Sonic. Everybody wants to unlock Super Sonic in a Sonic game. It's the classic reward you get in these things. This power-up makes it so Sonic becomes invulnerable and he can build up speed a lot faster at the cost of 50 rings that slowly drain down as you maintain Super Sonic form. That's how it works in the classic games, more or less, and that's how it works in Sonic Colors. Super Sonic! In the old game, all it took to 
do this was get the Chaos Emeralds, but it's a lot trickier in Sonic Colors. Instead of getting a few emeralds, you have to collect every single red ring in the game, and on top of that, complete these challenge missions in the Sonic Simulator, which is a lot to ask for, especially for what is normally a pretty easy going game. The real reason it a lot of people passed it up is that while Super Sonic's a nice reward, it was the first 3D Sonic game to even bring back that kind of power, so in a sense, the usage is pretty limited. One big issue is that the levels in Sonic Colors are sometimes ridiculously short. Half the time, it, it feels like you get to the end before you even get the 50 rings. Another problem is that Super Sonic means that you can no longer use Wisps, which are the power-ups the game basically revolves around. They can't be used, so big chunks of levels you just can't do as Super Sonic. Um, Super Sonic and Sonic Colors is one of those good ideas just wasn't thought through, which makes it more of a chore to unlock than it really should be, and the reward maybe isn't great, so a lot of people just pass on it. And number three is Bet and Kaido's Origins Permanent Critical Hits. It's pretty rare for an RPG to hit you with an upgrade as powerful as this one, but there's a reason for that. Sure, making every one of your attacks guaranteed to be critical sounds like a fantastic upgrade that everyone would use, but the process of unlocking it is so difficult that it's pretty much just an infamous thing among JRPG fans. To get this cheat, First, you have to finish the bizarre and dreadful Pac-Man side quest, which involves feeding 147 quest Magnus to him in order to get an item that gets you the upgrade. Uh, you get these Magnus for completing quests, of course, and many of which are extremely obscure, uh, missable, or ludicrously time-consuming and tedious. Remember, this isn't like a modern RPG with sensible side quests. Most of these things are not tracked at all and have arcane requirements that just are not fun. The game doesn't keep track of which Magnus you've given to Pac-Man, at all, so I hope you brought a pen and paper because otherwise you might be stuck doing this whole thing over again. It's goofy, uh, and I mean seriously, you're feeding crap to a giant Pac-Man in an RPG, and it's extremely frustrating, and by the time you actually get the power up, the game is basically done anyway. And number two is Mass Effect the Liara bonus. During the early days of Xbox achievements, games didn't just reward you with points, it sometimes give you in-game rewards as well. Mass Effect went all in on this idea and made it so earning in-game achievements would unlock features, giving you bonuses to weapon damage and stuff like that. It's actually all pretty great, but most of them are not super hard to get if you played the game enough. By far the most annoying achievements were the character ones, where you had to complete so many assignments that are ugh, not fun with a certain character in your party. They alternate between 45 and 50, which is a hell of a lot for a game like the first Mass Effect, which can be completed in uh, like a dozen hours or so, even when you're not rushing. Like, it's not a long game. Every character trophy or achievement gets some kind of useful upgrade, especially Liara's, which improves barrier and stasis, which are some of the most useful biotics in the game, and it improves them by 10%, which is a pretty handy upgrade, especially if you're playing on higher difficulties. However, getting Liara in your party for 50 assignments is unlikely, even for players who try to get her as early as possible. In comparison to some other cheats on this list, it's not the hardest to get if you know what you're doing, but it took me multiple playthroughs to finally get this one to appear, at which is well beyond every other character in the game. Great upgrade, but uh, it is unnecessarily frustrating to get. And finally at number one is Deadly Premonition's Light Sword. This cult classic Twin Peaks homage, a uh, uh, big scare quotes around homage here, but yeah, uh, it has a unique charm all its own, and well, not, it's not necessarily good in the traditional sense. It hasn't stopped a ton of people from not just playing it, but loving it. A lot of fans of the game say do one of the next two things, either unlock a good weapon or turn down the difficulty, because even fans of the game agree that the combat sections are not phenomenal. You'd think that would mean everyone would agree to get the light sword, which is basically a lightsaber that kills almost any enemy in one hit. Um, it's a great weapon that makes combat a cinch, but it is not what's generally recommended to get just because it's so annoying to actually unlock. 
To get it, you have to find every in-game trading card. That means completing every side quest, many of which are god-awful. But worst of all, you have to go back through every combat section again to find new trading cards that get put in them. The whole point of this exercise is to get through the combat systems as quickly and painlessly as possible, not go through them a second time. That's why even fans of the game tell new players not to bother with it. It's basically cheating, it's so powerful, but wow, it just defeats its own purpose. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is a course of subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter as Falcon the Hero, and we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.